but before I go into the client side configuration let me just show you what the commands that were entered on my switch in order to communicate with my another policy server and how I configured ports for .1x authentication this is my switch configuration here and you will see specific ports that were configured for .1x authentication in my case I, uh, I have clients configured on port number 2 and port 13 and on port number 2 you will see that it is configured with the following command .1x port control auto and the same is, th is done for port number 13 in which I have the second client connected to the section for the radius server and in my case my network policy server which is my radius server is 10.0.0.10 using an authentication port of 1812 which I have entered and is usually the default port and this port here was automatically configured once I entered the command. There are some other commands that you must enable before you enable radius authentication for your switch and based on this the device that you're using, in my case I'm using a Cisco Catalyst 3550 and I went on Cisco website and this provided all the information that is needed to configure the switch so these are the commands that I've entered on my switch. Configure terminal, EEE, new model, triple E, authentication, etc. And you will see all these commands on the Cisco website. In my case, I'm in my case for the 3550, I'm on the respective page for my Cisco switch model. So I've entered all these commands that you've seen here. And I've also entered this one, although it says that it is optional, but it is actually required if you want to dynamically assign VLANs to a particular port based on the compliance level of a machine. Alright, so if I go back to my console, my switch console, let me just show you where I have, where I have entered those commands. And by the way, just so you know, the VLAN 2 network is my restricted network, so any clients that are not compliant, that don't have antivirus or firewall turned off, will be placed into this VLAN here. And if they are compliant, their firewall is on, they will be placed into this VLAN in which my servers and file servers are located. So in this way I'm using 82.1x authentication to enforce network access based on the compliance level of a machine. And how it works is that a machine will authenticate, however, it will not be allowed to transmit normal traffic to a network. So it will only be on my VLAN 3 network if it meets the health policy requir requirements which I've defined earlier. And if not, then that port will be dropped back to VLAN 2 which does not have any access at all to VLAN 3 so I might have a remediation server in VLAN 2 for example an antivirus update server or Windows update server just for those clients and when then when those clients are compliant they will be moved to VLAN 3 okay so now on to the clients there are a couple things that you need to enable in all clients in order to get 802.1x authentication work with NAP enforcement so if I go to my services window on Windows XP you will see a couple of servers, services that are required for this configuration to work and one of them is to ensure that the network access protection agent is set to automatic and started and also the wired autoconfig service is set to automatic and started once you've enabled the wired autoconfig if you go to properties on your network card you will now get an authentication tab in which you will enable 802.1x authentication and you can configure the settings as you see here and this is where you must allow the client to validate the server certificate that was issued to your network policy server so your clients must trust the certificate authority in your domain You can automate this if you have a large number of clients by setting a group policy which is again pointed out in the Microsoft document which I outlined earlier that tells you how to create a group policy to automatically enable the Wireconfig and the Network Access Protection services on all your clients or specific clients. And there's also another group policy that must be enabled 